Um, Hannah and I would like to thank CUNY and the judges for this award and founding Dean Emeritus Steve Shepard for whom this prize is named. Um, <laughs> Hannah also thought it would be a growth opportunity for me to give the speech, so... It's not her comfort zone. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> so, when I first started to entertain the idea of going to journalism school, I had coffee with an acquaintance. He was a reporter at was what was then a little known outlet named ProPublica. This was early 2009 and the journalism business was not going well. And he told me that going to journalism school was something akin to getting a degree in VCR repair. <laughs> but I've never been good at taking advice. So a couple of months later, I was at orientation at the J School Dean Shepard welcomed our class, and it dawned on me that I didn't know much about the craft of journalism. Didn't know what a nut graph was, and lead, to me, was a verb. But by the third semester, when I walked into Andy Laren's investigative journalism class, I had begun to get my footing. Sarah Bartlett was then a professor. She had put me through my urban reporting boot camp. I had it drilled to me to just pick up the phone, and I learned that L-E-D-E -E was a word, and uh, I had started to learn how to write one. Hannah, who I am celebrating this award with today, was quite a ways ahead of me in all of this. She was the force behind our high school newspaper. She founded her college one. And despite being several inches shorter than me when she's not wearing heels, uh, I found her incredibly intimidating. But we discovered we had a lot in common. We were both interested in prison and race and immigration, and we both read way too much Joan Didion. <laughs> and as graduation neared, we cooked up a kind of harebrained scheme. Uh, we would get part-time jobs stringing, and we'd apply for grants to do investigative reporting in the rural south. Even now, it sounds kind of insane. Um, this was 2010, journalism was still not good. And, uh, but CUNY had given us the confidence to pursue what mattered to us. Our plan wasn't the most prudent. I didn't have debt going into grad school, but Hannah did, quite a lot of it. She paid hundreds of dollars a month as we cobbled together our career in the early years. Becoming a journalist is a risk that many can't actually afford to take. But Hannah wasn't about to let that stand in her way. And she wasn't about to let my lingering doubts about my ability to be a journalist stand in mine. Her drive and encouragement helped us both get hired at NBC News. That brought us to State College, Pennsylvania, where we tried to make sense of why an institution would look the other way in the face of child sexual abuse. It led us to a jail in Alabama where immigrant detainees pressed their palms against the glass and implored us to listen to their stories. And it took us down to Florida last spring where we reported a story about corrupt drug rehabs that brings us here today. Late one night down in South Florida, I convinced Hannah to go to a motel. I had heard that women there were overdosing and being trafficked. One young woman in our story had died in that motel. And I needed to know and to see where those women had been. Hannah thought it was a terrible idea, but she understood that feeling, and so we went together. What we saw was heartbreaking. There were men standing guard in front of the rooms, women stumbling across the parking lot, all in plain sight, and a feeling welled up in me that I had rarely experienced. It was fear. I tell you this because as a freelancer and as a journalist and as a woman, I couldn't have done the last eight years alone. This job is hard. It's often sad. You get shouted at and lied to and you witness a lot of ugliness. And there are ways of coping. Not all of them are good but I'm lucky to have had a ride or die, someone who I could call with an ethical question, bounce ideas off of, express exhaustion, 
Hannah is among a cadre of women, many of them in this room tonight, who I call colleagues and who I call close friends. We talk about pay scales and frustrating editors. We talk about race and class and gender. We have supported each other through discrimination in the newsroom. We've laughed and we've gotten mad. And this year, we've gotten mad more often at the ways in which people have dismissed women when they said something is wrong here, and at the ways we didn't listen to ourselves or dismissed others when a voice inside of us said the same. This year has made me reflect on being a woman in journalism, but also on what we purport to do. Investigative journalism is often described as shining a light. But the stories we tell are already well known to the people living them, whether they're Hollywood's leading ladies, or people in Ferguson, Missouri, or a reporter in the newsroom whose thoughts have been dismissed, or drug users in South Florida. Even in the darkness, they see quite well what's going on. It's just that most of the time, no one who knows what a lead is has yet bothered to listen. Hannah and I are incredibly proud to have won this award. We're proud to be CUNY alumni. We know that telling the stories of the women who died in those motels doesn't undo the tragedy of addiction or make their families' pain go away. Investigative journalism isn't that powerful. But we do believe in asking questions and trying to tell stories that matter. So we remain committed to the craft we hope you remain committed to that. We remain committed to cutting through the chatter and the tweets of the day. And we remain committed to listening for the, story, for the voices already telling those stories and the ones that we haven't yet bothered to hear. Hannah and I thank you very much. And we are proud to share the stage with some of the journalists who have inspired us most. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>